Hey guys, what is going on? NGS back again for a collab video. Joining me today, I've got Young Rots 112. What is going on, Robert? Man, too much and at the same time, not enough, man. Not enough indeed. So, Robert, you want to open us, you want to bring us in, you want to tell everybody at home what we're going to be talking about today if they couldn't read the title? Oh, man, we are going to be talking about DMC. Capital D, lowercase m, capital ass C. Oh, you mean we're gonna be talking about that uh that that Japanese game with that really badass guy with the white hair, you know, eating pizza, doing all them crazy attacks? That game? Oh no, nah, I'm talking about <laughs> I'm talking about this new Ashton Kutcher looking motherfucker. <laughs> Dante ain't the same no more. I guess he got the boot, and they got this new guy. You know, he's angry at the world. Apparently, he's supposed to represent us. So, um, yeah, I mean, I personally, I got a new name for him. I call him Lonesome Pete. To me, he looks like little Nicky. Hell yeah, he looks like little Nicky. It's like he actually looks like him now. Might I'm as well glad... would have gotten Adam Sandler to do the voice. I mean, come on, you got the look. Exactly. He's half man. angel, half demon. Come on now, Ninja half Theory. Half angel, half demon. That ain't, ain't that some shit. Ain't that something awesome. But yeah, jokes aside, today, everybody, we're going to be talking about the new DMC game coming out. Uh, early next year and we're not just going to discuss only what we think about the game in its present form but as well as giving some history to this whole situation because some not all might be unaware of what's been going on so we're going to take this back to around fall of 2010 at the Tokyo Game Show where Capcom announced that Ninja Theory would be handling a new Devil May Cry game and for those who saw the gameplay trailer you didn't even have to be the biggest Devil May Cry fan out there to know that this was going to be something different. Am I right? Oh, you're definitely right. It's like when you see gameplay from the other DMC games and then you look at this one, the entire tone, the entire atmosphere, the feeling, all of that is gone. And, you know, personally, from my point of view, I really wasn't too opposed with the idea that they were doing this change, doing a reboot, because simply I felt that if it is handled in the right way, change could be a good thing. You know, it all depends. A different perspective on something. What about you, Rob? I would I would agree with you. I was on the fence at, at most because, like, I ain't gonna, when I first when I first caught the experience, I'll never forget this infamous day when I went to IGN and I seen the trailer. I was at I was at a class in my college and I literally got up and walked out the class. No, <laughs> I got up and I just walked out. Professor, I, I gotta leave. Why? <sighs> There's a new Dante in town. Exactly. I, I'm t- I didn't even say anything. I was I just shook my head, closed the window, got up, walked out. Aww. But uh, but you know I was still open when it blew over. You know I chilled out and I was still open to it, although. I would say right now, at that moment, I wouldn't have suggested a reboot because it was still, you know, aspects. And there's still a whole nother story with the old Devil May Cry that could have been explored. There's a whole story aspect they didn't cover. They never officially showed us what Sparta did. And I was expecting that to be one game, like one game to actually show us, probably even play as Sparta to actually see what happened instead of a narrator always saying what happened, you know. Yeah, that was I think the one thing that uh um <clears throat> that uh some people were kind of I guess like at the end of DMC four people were like, uh, you know, this game was all right, but I think we could have done without it. I thought that if they did a game starring Sparta, uh, I think that would have given it the you know, the juice it needed, you know, to reinvigorate people's love of Devil May Cry, you know? Exactly. You you remember the early the early concepts of Double May Cry Four when it, it was like a bunch of videos of Dante. One when he was out in that snowy that snowy area, and then one where he did that crazy combo and looked like some city or something. Mm-hmm. And like I wonder how they went from that to what we ended up getting with Four. You know? I don't know. We got this Johnny Young Bosch Nero someone bitch up in this, but uh, <laughs> that's another discussion yeah. for another day about Nero. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that know. guy. <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, with this new game and the changes they were making, I looked forward to it with how I look forward to a lot of things that I am heavily skeptical of, you know, cautious optimism. But 
you know, that isn't what really, you know, turned me off from the game. Because, like, since the game's inception up until now, you know, we will both agree that the game, from a technical standpoint, it looks good. Oh, yeah, definitely. I I wouldn't take that away from you. Yeah, as a game itself, like, I really like what Ninja Theory is doing with it. You know, I I, I like um, the feel of it. I love everything about it. The problem, though, this isn't Devil May Cry. Hell no. This is, the way I look at it, this is Heavenly Sword, where Fox News is the bad guy wanting to imitate (laughs) Devil May Cry. You know what I'm saying? That Fox News, man. <laughs> you be talking about political issues, corruptness. Dante's angry at the world. I'm like, what? This this isn't Devil May Cry. I, like this is this is my main issue with a lot of things. They create this game that you know is totally you unique, original, all that stuff, and then they slap the name of a popular franchise and expect it to sell. But people play the game. They're like, this isn't Devil May Cry at all. Not at all, man. Dante or Lonesome Pete is a domestic terrorist. He is Huey Freeman. Really. Yo, man, now he ain't badass like Huey Freeman, though. Yeah, I take that back. Yeah, giving him better too much take credit. that back. No, he is a sexual deviant. There we go. He is a sexual deviant. And uh, shout out to Path of Geo Free because he was telling me that, that that could end up being so many things. They could take that in so many ways. A sexual deviant. Oh, yeah. It, it, this isn't our words, guys. These are the words from the actual developers. Sexual deviant. Yeah. Exactly. Developers and flat out in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Sexual deviant. Take that how you want it. <laughs> Yo, whatever happens, I don't know. But yeah, that's what we really wanted to you know, get out there in the open early because people are going to say, oh, you guys are hating on the game because it's not Devil May Cry when we actually give it props for what it's doing. Just don't call it Devil May Cry. Right. Call it Ninja Theory Irrelevant Title Number 3. There we go. Exactly. Starring you know. Fox News. Starring that damn Fox News. Mm-hmm. Coming from a guy who went into this looking forward to it, from that point up until now, I have been disgusted at the sheer level of unprofessionalism that Ninja Theory has given off. These people, they outright insult the fans, they insult the franchise that they're working on, they outright lie to the customers, and... This level of professionalism from a video game developer, it's just pretty much hilarious. It really is. This is, this is crazy, man. It's, it's like, you know, you're handling a franchise, a really popular franchise that people love, and you're doing all these changes. You know, any sane person with the sheer a sheer level of professionalism would approach this and talk to the fans who are, you know, disgruntled at this change saying, hey, guys, it's okay. Um, you know, we know that you guys really do love this franchise, and we understand why you love it. It's an icon. It's 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 amazing. Blah 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 blah. And we really hope that we can bring you that same sheer level of enjoyment, all of that good jazz. Essentially, just say it's going to be okay. We hope to provide you with a great experience. That is not what Ninja Theory did, though. Hell no. You want to take it away on some of the. Like, starting from, I believe, oh, since the game's inception, they were already talking smack. Oh, yeah. Um, that's, um, like, two months after the initial announcement of the game, when um, Tameem, whatever the hell his last name is, did an interview, I remember a, a certain phrase that jumped out at me because, obviously, the interviewer asked them how would they feel, you know, about the veteran fans' backlash. And... I distinctly remember him saying, oh, the idiots are getting mad over anything. Now, idiots stuck in my head. You know? So, and from then on, it's like they tried to fight with the fans every interview they do. Like, to me, saying, what was it? What was it? He don't, he doesn't care what the veteran fans Oh, do. yeah. This is the, this is the, the, the funny part of it. It, it all comes back full circle. First off, um, to me, like you said, he was calling the fans idiot, idiots. And the reason why was due to the fact that it was the white hair, that everybody was pissed off the solely because hair. of the white hair. And you know what the sad thing is? The gaming yeah. media, all of them journalists, they jumped on it and said, whoa, you guys need to chill out. It's just white hair. It's not about the damn white it's hair. not about that at all. 
And these so-called gaming journalists, if they actually did their job, they know it's more than this. I, I haven't seen people complain about the white hair only since the end of 2010. Yes, there were people who did that. There were. They just bitched at the white hair. But you know what? It was more than that. And people stopped complaining about that when they started to see that there was more important things to handle. Exactly. And and another thing, there's a difference because some sometimes people took some words wrong as in they could be complaining about the entire appearance. That doesn't necessarily mean they complaining about the hair color, you know. Yeah. It's it's not just the character's hair. It can do it, it deals with other aspects of the character himself, you know, personality. All exactly. that. So, you know, because in that first trailer, I mean, I admit it. I said he looked like he was smoking mufflers, you know? So, like... Oh, man. And that also, that first trailer is all... Oh, man. I can't wait to just hit home on how this game is completely changed from start to now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, you know, Tamim, Tamim, and it was also his lackey, Alex Jones, they kept talking shit. And this is the funny that thing. That guy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that guy Alex man they, they single handedly try to fight the internet to you. they're trying to fight everybody every single person it's like oh you, you guys you, you gotta stop complaining about the white hair what's with all the softball questions also oh I heard they were dodging questions yo, yo every live stream every live stream that they had there was like at least a two minute gap between questions and there were all these questions were like um, in regards to the story, why are you changing it into something that it's not Devil May Cry? They just avoided them. <laughs> Damn. It's like you're looking at the feed, and they're looking at the feed too, and they're just like, hmm. <laughs> what should we answer? What should we answer? Hmm. They oh, okay. The hell out of that boy. Oh, what's the name of the main character? Oh, his name is Dante. Yeah, there's your question right there. Exactly. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all sidetracked on this. Oh, uh, because man, it, it, that rage, man, that rage. Oh, I can't think straight, yo. So back, back, back on point to, uh, to to meme. Him and Alex started fighting the fan base for no reason whatsoever, only because they wanted to. They wanted to appear rebellious. They didn't care what people said at first. At first, they said when this came out that they were catering to the fans of Devil May Cry. Right then. Later on, they said they were catering to the critics. <laughs> we don't care about the fans of the game. We don't care about what you guys say. We're, we're aiming for those high 80s, those those low 90s, all that. And oh, yeah, 90th percentile. Man. Oh man, it's gonna be better than DMC one. I'm telling you, man. It's it's like, and they automatically they automatically had a big red X on three. They was trying to go after three. Talking about. Yeah, we got to get people off of three years. Yep. And so from that point on, it was just all shit talking from them, which we're going to get into more later. But the funny part, Capcom. Capcom, I don't know really what to honestly say about them because they have been talking a lot of smack as well to try to defend Ninja Theory. But at the same time, they're trying to throw Ninja Theory under the bus. At first, at first, it was like when the, the new design was released, they were saying, Ninja Theory was saying that, Oh, man, it, it was all on us. We did this. We want to take all the credit for it. And then when people start getting angry, uh, Cap, Capcom, Cap, 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 Capcom told us to change it. They told us exactly. to change it. You're like, hey, Capcom came to us and told us to change it. And I was like, at, at first it was they trusted in us. Pretty much they trusted in us to hook it up. Now it is, man, they told us to do this shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then Capcom starts saying that, oh, well, we didn't expect the Devil May Cry fan base to react so violently. And then later on, they're like, yeah, we kind of expected the backlash because of this franchise in particular. It's like, really? Really? <laughs> I'm telling you, this all comes full circle when it comes to controversy. Because Alex Jones said it's better to have people talking about us, good or bad. Yeah. So they don't care what you say or what they do. As long as people are talking about it, they want it to get it out there. Ugh. Ugh. That's some bullshit, man. <laughs> like, I'm just, just to make it blunt, that's bullshit. Complete bullshit. There was one insult in particular from Ninja Theory that was really the straw that broke the camel's back when they insulted the original Devil May Cry. 
Yo, my head exploded. It took months for it to grow back, man. <laughs> Dante is somehow uncool. His look is outdated. If he walked by a bar, people would laugh at him. Laugh at him. Yo, but this th- this guy, she's not not to throw this new Dante under the bus, but this guy, are you telling me that he would get laughed at with this freaking anorexic Justin Bieber lookalike? Okay. Right, I'm. I'm telling. He come walking up, long ass trench coat, damn tank top under it, not flexing any kind of muscle. I laugh my ass off at him. Uh, I mean, I mean, seriously, the definition of the word cool that is subjective from person to person. Exactly, and it's like, you know, I mean, obviously, if you see my videos, you know, I told the cool shit apart. I'm like, hey, how the hell does to me know what cool is? Because remember, remember, everybody saw it a mile away. That first model with Lonesome Pete looked like, like to me. Oh, yeah, and all the comparisons. Ha <laughs> ha, he doesn't look like me. Maybe he kind of does if I'm 20 years younger. I'm like, yo. No. No. Yo ass went to that first interview with the same hairstyle, that damn skunk. <laughs> <laughs> that damn skunk. And you, you wanted it to be known. You motherfucker. You. <laughs> Damn it, man. <laughs> it all backfired on me. I wanted to be a video game character. I wanted to be one, Mom. I'm telling you. I got to say this. One of the most fascinating things I've seen about this game is how fast they could change a motherfucking model. <laughs> Yo, this this is what I really wanted to talk about. A lot of people are using the whole artistic vision card when it comes to DMC. And that, to me, is a firm believer in quality over sales. So... I remember him saying a while ago, after all this controversy, that he doesn't care if the game sells 1,000 units or a million units. Now, if he's a firm believer in that, and yes, there are people out there who believe that they don't care about the sales, they just want to get their thing out there, which is respectable. If he doesn't care about sales, where's Heavenly Sword 2? Exactly, man. Yo. Where, where the hell is it? He, don't, he, he doesn't care, right? Well, Heavenly Sword was clay to be molded. Heavenly Sword, where's Enslaved 2? I mean, I, seriously, where, where are these games? It, it, our artistic vision? Really? Really? Come on to it, me. Exactly, you know? And and remember remember the early articles about it. Enslaved was saying that, you know, they were trying to get to a, a bigger audience by making it multi-platform rather than another PS3 exclusive. Mm-hmm. You know, because they, didn't, they wanted to avoid... What happened with Heavenly Sword? It was a good game, and nobody bought PS3s. And it was it had a bad start. Yeah. And then you look at the sales of Enslaved compared to Heavenly Sword, and it didn't matter that it was multi-plat or not. It it, it really didn't. Well, are you just saying this so people think you're cool? You're rebellious. You are. You are just doing this to try to. It's like to calm the storm. <laughs> No, but oh. really, but really, Ninja Theory, you don't care what people think, then, hmm, why does Dante from that first trailer look so different from Dante now? Yeah, th- does he even still fucking smoke? Nope. I haven't seen it. Either. Nope. Uh, Tamim was like, wow, oh. he don't even smoke no Tameem more. Tamim was they like, uh, he's shit. giving up smoking now. And I'm like, really? He ain't even, they ain't, ain't nobody even played the shit and the motherfucker started and quit smoking already. <laughs> Man, if everybody was like this new Dante and they stopped smoking, the world would be a much better place. I mean, damn, that was the whole big emphasis on the first trailer. He was smoking a cigarette, the demon in the headlock <laughs> ripped apart. No, they not any put the cigarette out on his head and shit. Like that was supposed to be a big thing. And what happened he, to creative <laughs> vision, to meme? Exactly. I thought you ain't cash. Yo, you would have stuck to your guns. At least I would have had some respect that you didn't change your final design. And, and oh, the devil trigger mode. Oh, the it, 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 man, yo, the devil trigger, or <laughs> where Lonesome Pete turns into somebody he wish he could be. <laughs> now, now, obviously, this devil trigger mode is gonna give you a, a sudden, gonna give Lonesome Pete a sudden burst of strength and all that. But I thought the original Dante wasn't cool, so why even still? Have him look somewhat like him, and apparently, obviously, when you turn into this devil trigger, it's gonna save your ass. Mm-hmm. It, so everything. Once again, we go back to why are you still touching this if it wasn't cool. Seriously, everything comes back to um, them not caring what people say. Yo, how much 
of a slap in the face would it be if you end up stuck in that mode? Yo, I, I called. I wrote it down in a notebook. I, I got a notebook of two major things I see that's going to happen. He is going to get stuck in that mode, yo. And then you finally see him in the next game. Oh, God. Tell me, I, 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 got, I got another another thing I foresee, but I'll save it for later when we cover the most recent Travis. <laughs> so then we move forward to Capcom. And Capcom, Capcom, like we said, they don't know what they want to do in this situation. He said, she said. But their original, like... They forecasted that five plus million game copies of DMC would be sold. And this is, I think, around the time of TGS, sometime 2010, maybe early 2011. But since they have <laughs> retracted that and they've put their forecast at, you know, two million. <laughs> I wonder if you're, if you're trying to say you're going to cater to the critics and the sales, then why did you drop it so high? Exactly. Mm. I, once again, I thought you didn't care. It all comes back to that. It's like, you know, if, if somebody says they don't care, like me, if I took on a new attitude, I woke up and said, I don't care about nothing. I could walk outside and slap a little kid and keep walking. <laughs> I don't care. And I'm not going to apologize about it. If anything, I see you again, I'm going to slap you again. Yo, but it all comes back to like to meme and all of them trying to be cool and they want to be rebellious and say they don't care when they do care. It's, it's like this is the thing. They talk so much smack like they are the shit by insulting other developers. Yo, that pissed me off. Remember remember to me had the nerve to come in uncharted to you. Oh god. Some of the facial scans were overdone and all that. Sh- I'm like, yo, that's the game of the year. Where yours at, to me? Yo, yo. <laughs> to me, says a lot of stuff that he then tries to do damage control. Oh, triple AAA, AAA games are killing innovation, and I'm like, yo, you, <laughs> you. yo, that was an epic gas impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> I damn, I looked at the mic and like, what the? Fuck? <laughs> They're killing innovation. To me, do you have a triple A game? No, no. No, no triple A game for Tamim. Oh, Uncharted 2 is so overdone. But why are you insulting Naughty Dog? Why? And then, oh, we love Uncharted. We love Naughty Dog. Oh, Tamim, stop it. Just stop. You're making yourself look like an idiot. Tamim is trying to be like the Eminem of the video game world. But he doesn't have the rap sheet to back it up. Exactly. If, exactly. Yo, if this, God forbid, someone like Miyamoto or Kojima started talking like this, at least, at least I know they can talk the smack because exactly. they can back you know, it you up. You can't say nothing. You you can't say nothing back because look at the rap. Yeah, all this stuff. And to me, it was like, well, what'd you do? Oh, I did Heavenly Sword. It was this really artistic game on the PlayStation Three. That nobody. Bought. I honestly, if if my memory serves me correctly, I believe Ninja Theory's best review game was that fucking what was it Kung Fu Chaos on the Xbox. Yeah, Xbox. that was their best reviewed game. Tisk 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 tisk. And the forecasting for the low sales. What if this game doesn't sell well? Which granted, I don't think it's gonna do that well. Are you gonna drop this and move on to the next franchise? Exactly. It's, it's definitely not, not going to sell well for two reasons. One, the grave they done buried for themselves. And two, the the time slot they picked, like almost a whole bunch of other games then pushed back to being close to them. Yeah, it comes out, I believe, January 15th of next year, which I already know I'm not getting that game. I'll be getting that Nino Cooney, Wrath of the White Witch. <laughs> RPG, looking beautiful. But in all seriousness, people, you know, if, if they had presented us with this change in a professional way and they actually connected with the fans instead of insulting them and being just complete dicks about it i would have more respect for them i would even though i may not have liked the way the game was going at least knowing that these people have the common courtesy and respect to you know for their potential customers but they've lost me as a customer when they started insulting the fans and the game that they're basing this off of Exactly that, and that's the thing with me. That's where the bullshit comes in. I'm I took a vow on myself that when to me say he didn't care what the veteran fans think, I said, all right, I'm about to troll your game like to hell and back. Troll it until they make an enslaved too. I'm telling you, shit. 
Seriously. But, you know, we've talked a lot about Ninja Theory and Capcom, Tamim and Alex Jones. I believe there was one last thing that you wanted to say before we touch up on the sheep aspect. Yeah, the revelation of Virgil. And one of the funniest things that this started is that now, now, everyone is mad. Now. You, you've seen, you seen Virgil, right? I've... I try to forget it every day, man. It's like, man, oh, the new name I gave for him, Gimme Sam. Yo, so Lonesome Pete and Gimme Sam against Fox News. Exactly. That, that's, that'd be amazing. That'd be an amazing adventure. But this this ties in really to the whole sheep aspect of it. There are people out there who are saying that, well, I don't care that Ninja Theory are being dickheads and all this stuff is going on behind the scenes because all the game has to be is entertaining for me to buy it. So, so, okay, let me, let me get this straight. By you not caring of what is happening leading up to the game, and mind you, this isn't, this isn't like a small underground thing that nobody has, you know, given attention to. No, there have been constant news articles, postings about this whole situation because Ninja Theory are acting unprofessional. That's a big issue. Right. So by you sanctioning them acting like saying this behavior is OK because I'm going to buy your game. All of these faceless corporations that do these bad things behind the scenes that people are aware of, like like um, the fast food industry, you're essentially sanctioning all that crap. Right. Like really now it, it doesn't matter. So instead of like it's like they're acting like dmc is like the only game to ever come out no there are tons of developers out there who put time and effort into making a franchise and also appealing to their audience acting professional exactly and their games come out why don't you support one of them why do you have to support these people who made it known that they don't care exactly exactly it's like and then you got those that like just wobble on the middle of the fence because I, I know a couple of people now. I'm planning to call them out when the game release. But those people that be like, yeah, man, this man, this game sucks. This 2010, man, this game going to suck, man. I don't even like what they did with Dante. This ain't Devil May Cry and all that. They give you a, a, a shitty gameplay video. I'm on board. I'm on board. I'm getting it. You see that? That looks epic. And then when, when they showed Virgil, you had it split down the middle. People saying they going to get it. And then people that were supporting it all this time now, now they pissed off because they Virgil fanboys and now they messed him up when they should have seen it coming when what they did with Dante. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like every everybody's flip flopping now. Man. There were so many red, red, red signs all throughout, red lights telling you, you know, this isn't gonna be that good. But I mean, come on, when they said that the game is running at 30 frames per second. 30 frames for Devil May Cry. Just just think about that. And when you see the gameplay in action, how his weapon changes depending on like angel attributes or demon attributes, what does that sound like? Man. Heavenly it, sword, it, man. Heavenly sword. It, it, that's what I was about to say. I was about to say it sounds like a Ninja Theory game. You know, that to be honest, that's it. You know? It's like, yeah, we have like it it reminds me of Heavenly Sword. You know, you have the light stance and the heavy stance, you know, angel and demon. You know? I don't know why they have a bad habit of doing that shit. I, I, I really Change understand. it up, Ninja Theory. Damn. Well, Ninja Theory ain't that original, to be honest, when you compare a lot of the stuff. Oh, we're getting inspiration from Inception and The Dark Knight. So, man, I should have brought this up earlier, but screw it. Why are they making fun of Bayonetta? Oh, yeah. Damn, I forgot about that. To me, doesn't like Eastern games, apparently. He said that. He said it's, 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 it is in a... Well, he said Eastern games are like a completely stupid thing to do or something like that he said but the flat out he doesn't like eastern style games see i think he said like bayonetta is not the competition or something i'm like what something like that i did i do know he did take a big steaming crap on bayonetta bayonetta is not the competition but really to me so you don't care about eastern games yet you're basing your game off of an eastern game and you're trying to emulate that eastern game okay to me okay exactly but he says they westernized it though he says it but what he says and what we see the only thing i see from his quote-unquote westernizing it is the addition of a lot of fucks 
That's it. Yeah, this, a lot of this, curse words. This is going to be a mature. That's another thing. This is going to be a mature Devil May Cry for adults and not just kitty. When when this Dante is a potty mouth, that is not the mature that I'm looking for. When when people say mature, most of the time they're talking about oh fuck you bitch slut pussy. No, like mature adult themes and storytelling. Oh, sexual deviant. Fuck. Yep. Exactly. Did you see the the fucking video where um he seen the demon and uh I think he said something about the demon and the demon was like fuck you and then he was like fuck you and then she like no fuck you oh uh, is that the one I, I I think was that the one where he was in his house and he had his shirt off no nah, no nah, um it's another way I think it's the E three boss fight video whatever the hell it was yeah yeah it was something like that but i'm like they even got 12 a 1200 year old demon or whatever the hell how old she said she was up there screaming fuck you that that that's that's really mature right there real quick you know earlier how we we both mentioned with the devil trigger how much of a slap in the face it'd be if dante gets stuck right there. mm-hmm that was something I foresaw happening when I saw he had a devil trigger. And one of the trailers actually showed in his devil trigger form, he turned around to the camera and it, and it shut off. It went to black. So that's one thing I saw. And another thing I believe that is going to happen is that Virgil is going to turn on him at some point, And that's going to kick off, quote unquote, the feud. Uh, uh. Oh no! It's like if if you think about it real good, you can almost feel that it's gonna happen. Cause he, but he's he's acting too overly. Virgil acted too overly acceptive of Dante, like too much to the point where you can feel it. Like he's gonna turn at him at some point, and that's gonna be Ninja Theory way of kicking off the feud. The, the Dante Virgil feud gonna start out with that. Dante gonna be stuck. In his white hair form, and now all of a sudden he hates Virgil. So now he's really Dante, apparently. <sighs> I uh, I'm more depressed now than I was before we started this video. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like, man, you you can feel it. You can feel that it's gonna happen. I I I, I just so that's gonna be the way they're gonna try to turn him into the Dante we know. Just it doesn't work with this universe like I, I see people saying that oh it's a reboot they have to change things yes that is true however you still have to retain the same core elements so that it still gives off the vibe and it feels like devil may cry from people who have played the game for themselves who are devil may cry fans and who are not blind sheep it's not that at all right and you could see it from the gameplay and then there was that one guy who said uh what did he say? Oh, Ninja Theory takes an interesting twist on Devil May Cry and makes it more of an action game because the other ones felt like third-person shooters. Oh, if I ever wanted to choke somebody, somebody would have got choked that day. I, I want to see a person play through Devil May Cry 3 only using the gun. Only. I would love to see that. If, if they do that, I will give them my life savings. Seriously. With the gun. I, I want to see that happen. I, I just I want only I want guns. People got to back it up what they're saying, man. Cause I, I guarantee you, you gonna have white hair out of stress. <laughs> oh, that was so fucking stupid. Uh, see, and that's another thing with people trying to support it, just to, uh, just trying to support it, just to pull a crowd in. Talking about yeah, and you know this is gonna be a hit, and I'm supporting it too. Like, yeah, people want to jump on yourself, man. Yeah, seriously, people want to jump on the uh, the bandwagon of D. Capital D, lowercase m, capital C, love. But it's like people, there there are other games to support out there. And if you really, really want to tell them, like I know there are people who have given up like hope saying, well, we can't make a difference. We have made a difference. You want to know how? Okay. Ninja Theory. They've changed up the game from the second, from its inception to now. A lot of aspects are different. Capcom forecasted five plus million. It's now at two million. Yep. That's just two things right there that the gamers aren't happy. So you control. Vote with your wallet. Don't support it. Don't buy it. Well, you buy it used, I guess. That They ain't getting no money. There. Yeah, exactly. The, mon the money ain't going to them. So at the very least, I know I won't. So y'all can tell me about it, but I ain't touching that shit. Don't rent it. Don't do anything. And then tell them. So if this game doesn't do that well, Capcom will have to think twice about licensing out their games to 
on reliable studios. I mean, I don't know what prompted them to send it out to Ninja Theory out of all teams, really. Mm-hmm. You want to know the funniest thing I remember? I was it was it was a game informer like I think maybe a whole year or two before the announcement of DMC, and it was a small part in the game informer that said Ninja Theory potentially picking up Devil May Cry. And back then, I, I didn't pay too much attention to it. I was just like, hmm. If I would have known, this was this would have been what the hell that would have came. Oh. Uh, honestly, I don't really know mu- much to say anymore about Ninja Theory. It's like if you're if you're supporting these people and you're turning a blind eye to all of this visual BS, that's hilarious. For those of you who aren't really into Devil May Cry but are Ninja Theory fans, yeah, did you know that they blamed Devil May Cry fans for low enslaved sales? <laughs> yeah. Now, I've played Enslaved. Granted, it's a good game, but there are reasons for people to be upset with it and not want to buy it. And it doesn't it doesn't even help when they went up against what Call of Duty Black Ops, another Assassin's Creed game. This game wasn't going to sell. It wasn't. Exactly. And with the the, the amount of prof- um, unprofessionalism that they had at the time. People who were fans of Ninja Theory, they saw how they were handling this franchise and how they're dealing with the fans. They said, "You know what? I liked uh, I liked uh, Heavenly Sword, but I'm not buying a new game, man." I know actual Ninja Theory fans who turn the other way because of that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah there were pe- people out like there. Yeah, like me after seeing this, I'm I'm done with Ninja Theory. How they acted this whole this whole campaign, pretty much. I am done with them, man. Yeah. It's not just the simple aspect of, oh, you got to wait to play the game. It, it's it, That may work for a lot of games out there, but not this. You know, because it's not just the game that's the problem. It's the people behind the game. Right. But, you know, people are going to buy it, and then they're going to keep wondering why they're getting gypped out of their money and why they're doing this to the franchise. Ah, man, I... It's, it's, it's a it's a vicious it's a vicious cycle. Mm-hmm. You, you complain, but you still get it. I I said it before. You can't use that excuse. I know it's gonna suck ass, but I'm still gonna buy it because they don't care about how you feel. They just want that money. That sixty dollars that you lay down. That's all they really care about. Exactly. You can't convince yourself saying I know it's gonna suck ass, but I'm gonna get it. You gotta. That, that doesn't fly. Tell something to these companies, and then. They're going to learn in an age where companies are ripping off the gamers left and right. Like, really, like, the same people who are mad at companies like EA and Activision, they're supporting this. I'm like, why? Exactly. It's like, what is the, what is the difference? If anything, if anything, Ninja Theory has done the worst by directly insulting the consumers. You know? Potential customers. Exactly. I was a potential customer. I was actually willing to pick up this game and try it out because, you know, it looked kind of interesting. But when these people started acting out of line, it's, it's they, they broke the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Exactly. It's like it's like, no, no, no way in hell am I giving my money to someone that's an asshole. Unprofessional. No. Yep. But really, that's all that we had to say on Devil May Cry, people. It's. Get it if you want, but if you're one of those people who are going to complain constantly about the industry and all that junk about people not taking our medium seriously, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take take that however you want it. Take it however you want it, guys, and we're out. All right.